Hello, I'm Yu Yan Cho. I maintain Arch Linux package and ISOs for T2 Linux. I also run Linux Mirror. Hi, I'm Mark. I found the T2 Linux Discord community and was one of the initial testers of Paul Pavlovsky's Apple PC PCI driver. I also maintained NixOS for T2 Max for some time and still occasionally help people out when needed. Here's a T2 MacBook Pro. It has an Intel CPU and an, an AMD GPU, just like a no, uh, just like a normal PC. But this is not a normal PC. It has a special chip inside, the T2 chip. Apple says that it's a security chip. Sure, it does encrypt the in internal SSD, and it also provides secure boot and the SEP for encryption of important data and touch ID. But in reality, it controls almost everything in the Mac, the keyboard, trackpad, speakers, headphone jack, etc. you name it. The chip is based on the Apple A10 processor and is com completely proprietary with no official driver for Linux. Do you know how we got Linux to run on T2 Max? Let's find out. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> How we made it work, more like how we suffered from the proprietiness. Attempts to get Linux running on these machines started on 2019. And the first major advancement was Paul Pavlovsky getting the internal SSD working. After that, he started reverse engineering the Mac OS and Windows Bootcamp drivers in order to write the Linux driver for communicating with the T2 chip for which there was no documentation at all. As many important peripherals are connected to the T2 chip, Paul's driver plays a key role in these Macs. Similar to the Mac OS and Windows drivers, Paul's driver exposes the peripherals connected to the T2 as virtual USB devices, which means that the existing drivers for them work with little modifications. For other devices, more changes to the drivers were needed. In the case of Wi-Fi, Aoun Ali Zaidi uh, did some work to improve the situation, but the driver still needed changes to support using firmware from Mac OS Big Sur, to read information from the OTP ROM, to select the correct firmware files, and to work with newer Wi-Fi chips. The state of Wi-Fi improved when Corellium uh, released the Linux kernel 3 with added support for PCM 4378 chips, which are similar to the BCM 4377 chips found in some T2 Max. These later, these patches later got superseded by patches from the Asahi Linux project that support the proper firmware selection and Bluetooth on BCM 4377 chips. Currently, we are working on improving the quality of the Dutch bar and T2 bridge drivers. GPU switching without rebooting on dual GPU Max is also being worked on, and we have made a lot of progress. Quirks for a secure boot, the built-in NVMe drive, and the GPUs, UIC IDs for the built-in camera, keyboard backlight support for some models, and Miskalanus keyboard bug fixes have been upstreamed by us to the mainline Linux tree, and the Asahi Linux project has managed to get the PCM 4377 Bluetooth driver accepted. All, our goal is to eventually get everything mainlined to the main Linux source tree. Well, now it's time to see this Mac run Linux. Since it's, this is UbuCon, naturally we'll show it running Ubuntu. Due to some compatibility problems with this projector and Linux, some screen might, screen might seem some distorted. Please bear in mind. Since we can't mirror the screen because of bug, 
uh, we have to do some <laughs> extender <laughs> magic to get it working. Here's the command line currently. We, since, uh, since, because due to the legal problems of distributing the proprietary Broadcom Wi-Fi firmware, we have to set up Wi-Fi firmware here ourselves. And then we are connecting to Wi-Fi. Due to screen problem, we can show the progress of running Wi-Fi directly here, but we are connecting. Yeah, we are okay. connected. The Wi-Fi should be connected. Let's uh, try. It works. And for keyboard, we show you it's working, and touchpad, trackpad, of course, it's working. The screen is working, and battery percentage is working, but we can show you because of bug. <laughs> so if this projector is ancient, probably ancient, so it, we can mirror the screen to them. I guess that's all. Any yeah. questions, maybe? Any questions? <laughs> it's very bad. <laughs> Seriously, with with your the um, AMD GPU enabled, it could go from two to three hours, just like Mac OS does with external GPU. But if we enable internal GPU and use it, it could go to six hours actually. Any other questions? For for us from Asai, we got wi better Wi-Fi, uh, mainstreamable Wi-Fi for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth support. Since Corellium's patches were very dirty and non-streamable, so Asai gives us better Wi-Fi experience. Do you have any advice for uh, pushing your patches to kernel? Yeah, we have, but our patches are still relatively unstable, so we couldn't do it right now. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, yeah. uh, does it support hardware acceleration publicly? What? Does it support hardware, accel hardware acceleration? Uh, yeah, of course, because it is out, the, out of the box. The CPU and GPU is... Uh, Actually, just an Intel CPU and AMD GPU, they are just supported out of the box. Mm -hmm. Except the uh, MacBook Pro 16,4, the model with Radeon 5600M GPU, because it uses different firmware, and it is not on Linux, Linux, per, uh, Linux AMD GPU support, so it must use Intel iGPU or, or it doesn't work. Speaking about speaking about the iGPU and EG, iGPU and eGPU, the uh, does it support Optimus? It doesn't have Optimus. It has Apple proprietary the GMUX, 
the switching hard, their sw the switching chip is very standard, but their implementation is proprietary, so we are writing drivers for it. Oh. It works for now. Hmm. So it is now manual, manual switching. Not manual switching. You can use the same prime run thing. Oh. Okay. Okay, I understand. Any other questions? Anyone? <laughs> oh, this is very awkward. <laughs> yeah, this is our first presentation, so we are very nervous about this. Speak <laughs> for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this question might be not not very technical technical wise, but how do you think about possibility of this project? Like, will it uh, so will it uh, will it extend the life of uh, Intel Max, which will which will be stop supported very soon? I think it has potential to extend the support of Intel Max since the Linux still runs runs very well on this platform, except of course the performance is really nice, except the heating issues present on all Max because Apple designed it too thin, so there is some problem with cooling, so it might not reach maximum performance, but with the great optimization of Linux, it, it'll make this machine stay much longer relevant. So it's good to hear about, it's good to hear about that uh, potential, you think? So um, I also hope that Intel Max may live longer with great hardware, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Questions? We, on this uh, installation, we don't have Firefox installed, but I have on my main uh, Endeavor <laughs> OS installed, so I could can, reboot it. Can you it. show uh, maybe just any application besides the terminal, maybe a more graphical application, uh, <laughs> so we can kind of see the performance? <laughs> we can, since this ISO has very minimal application, like only settings, Ubuntu installer, but we could show the sound working by running the installer. <laughs> Please wait a moment. Yeah, it could, it has, also has sound support. We didn't mention that before, but yeah. It's the sound works, but it is still rougher than Mac, the Mac native sound because we don't have any e equalizer applied. Apple actually applies equalizer software so in core audio software, so the speaker sounds much better. But in Linux currently, like Mac, in Windows, no EQ is applied, so it sounds bad. But SI Linux is actually working on their equalization, so we might apply that here and get better resource from the speaker. And this is the application we have on the ISO. We don't have any intense, uh, the hardware intense application in this ISO, so we couldn't show it right now. But I could reboot it for if you want. So, <laughs> oh. uh, do you ever do anything special for installing Ubuntu uh, with P2? I mean, Ub I'm not an Ubuntu expert since I'm not a Ubuntu maintainer, but it will have special kernel for compile for U for T2 because, yeah, of course, it needs out of three patches and patches and modules, so it installs those corners more more newer than typically Ubuntu ships with. So since I'll show you the U name. This runs the Linux corner, the newest newest stable version, 6.04.9, compiled for this Ubuntu 22.10. So this installs this package and also the sound configuration for different models. Wi-Fi firmware, 
for legal reasons, don't get installed automatically, and you must get the f grab the firmware from macOS. Thank you. Any other questions? Three minutes left. Well, it's awkward, so we'll show some more is intense program running using other OS. Yeah. yeah there's some bugs, not incompatibility with the projector, so bear in mind. And unfortunately, the Apple logo doesn't get projected to the projector, so we couldn't show you the boot screen. Um, in, in the current state of in the current state of T2 T2 Linux, uh, can I use uh, 2018 Mac Mini to a server without not without any problems? Yeah, for a server there won't be any problem for that. The the main elements like CPU, GPU, and SSD and networking all work. So for server there will be zero problem. Also, Mac Mini has lacks some problematic parts, so it is better than, has better support than MacBooks. Like wireless, like Wi-Fi. Mm, yeah. Not Wi-Fi, but keyboard and trackpad. Ah. So. It still supports Wi-Fi, it works. Uh, but, I mean, it can connect to the internet by wire, wired connection without any proprietary drivers? No, it can't because Broadcom issues. Ah, it also, wired connection is also affected? What, wired isn't affected since it used the normal, normal Ethernet adapter inside. Oh, I understand. So, uh, so there will be no problem if I, if I use Mac Mini as a software, 2014 or 18 Mac Mini as a For 2014, there's uh, 2014 no, isn't T2. Not known T2, so yeah. 2018, there's no problem. Yeah, okay. And thanks. for a minute, so it, it can do 3D acceler acceleration, of course. This is the, the T2 Mac playing neighborhood. It was also used to demonstrate Asai Linux's graphic acceleration performances, so there's no problem with AMD GPU here by OpenGL. What? OpenGL? Yeah, it's a first full OpenGL 4.6. It's just in using the normal AMD GPU driver in corner. So OpenGL 4.6, Vulkan, everything is supported like normal AMD GPU. Oh, thank, thank you very much. And well, I think that's it for now. Our time has, is over. It's, so thank you so much for watching. Thank you.